We DXers can be a feisty lot. Occasionally, we'll accuse a weak signal station that we cannot hear of using a coat hanger for an antenna. So what happens if you actually use a coat hanger on the HF bands? Let's find out. It is my understanding that Roly ZL1BQD once tuned up a nail on 10 meters and made a contact with it. And in my December 2024 antenna update video, I joked about having a coat hanger antenna. So that's kind of fueled the inspiration to give this a try. Here is the coat hanger and it's about 41 inches long. First thing I want to do is make sure that it is indeed conductive. Yep. It's conductive, no problem there. My thought is to mount this SO239 basically upside down on some sort of mounting surface and then use this as the main radiator, of course, our coat hanger, and actually put it inside the SO239 and add some solder to it to keep it in place. This is a little bit too thick, so I gotta grind this down so it fits inside the SO239. Shout out to George, WA0FSE. He gave me this grinder years ago and it's come in handy multiple times. Going to use this old plastic container for the antenna base. Hopefully it'll keep things vertical. Going to drill a hole in the center and mount the SO239 backwards with the coat hanger driven element coming out of the center conductor and the PL259 going inside and meeting it at the top. It's a hack job, but I mean, this is just an experiment, and it fits in there just fine. WX0V professional hack at your service. Got to make sure I can screw a PL259 in here now. A little bit of a tight fit, but I think it'll work. Sounds like it's screwing in there. Yeah, this is the tricky part. I got to get this thing in there without melting the plastic. I think that's going to hold. Yeah, that's, uh, let's see. That's freestanding. It's not, you know, it's not Superman titanium strong, but I think that'll work. So far, so good. It is vertical. Well, it's kind of a curvy vertical with a hook on top, but it's vertical. I need to cut a notch out of the base so I can get the coax into it. I just don't want to do anything to damage the antenna. Like I said, this is rather precarious on here, but there we go. This antenna is going to require a counterpoise. Now, I certainly can go get another metal coat hanger, bend it into shape, and attach it to the SO239. But instead, I'm just going to use antenna wire, which will be at 41 inches, the same length as the coat hanger driven element. Before I add the counterpoise, let's check continuity. Okay, that looks good. Now I want to be careful. This is not on here super good. But I do want to check the inside SO239. All right. A fair question is, why am I not using a loading coil? And the answer is, too much work. I just want this to be simple, quick, and easy and a loading coil would be too much effort. We got the counterpoise hooked up, coax is hooked up, let's see if this thing works. I am a seasoned professional amateur radio hack. I have melted wire, I have burned out traps, I have fried radios. So please kids, don't try this at home 
or at least get your parents' permission first. For this experiment, I'm gonna be bypassing my ICOM IC7610, which is my primary rig. The SWR values on this are just gonna to be too high and I don't wanna risk it. And I wouldn't even dream of using any amplification with this antenna, no way. All right, here we go. I've got some snow built up around the base to hold it in place. I'm a poet and didn't know it. You can see the counterpoise is laid out there as well. I chose 10 meters for this experiment simply because I felt it had the best chance of matching the horrible impedances coming from this antenna. I would have used 6 meters, but the band just simply is not open. Now let's take a look at the SWR. I don't think this is going to be pretty. There's a lot of glare, so you may not be able to see it, but let's try. Oh boy. There is a thick yellow line going right across the top. 42.15 to 1. Oh boy. Now, can I get it to match and transmit on 10 meters? Let's give it a shot. The coat hanger antenna is QRV on 10 meters. I'm picking up signals. I am running a couple of preamps, as you'll see here, because there is a beyond significant mismatch going on. And let's see, this is a pretty strong signal. See if we can see who he is. I'm gonna to try to get this to transmit and fool the 7600 into thinking. Oh, it's W1AW, it probably explains his signal there. I'm gonna to try to fool the 7600 into thinking that it's somewhat close to 50 ohms impedance. I'm gonna be using my beefy Palstar AT1500DT antenna matching device to see if I can tune the snot out of this antenna and get some power out. I have a match. It was indeed a tricky combination of inductance and capacitance, which I did off camera. But my rig thinks there is 50 ohms of impedance coming from the coat hanger vertical. Thankfully, I have a very beefy antenna matching device here, as this is not something I would want to try with, say, the onboard tuner of my HF rig. The radio thinks there's 60 watts out and there's a flat match on the SWR. I can guarantee you that is not the case. So let's see if we can make a contact with it. Remember, I'm using a coat hanger. Almost. <laughs> Unbelievable, a coat hanger. He gave me all of 229, but he heard me. Unbelievable. Now that I've made a contact on CW, let's try FT8 just for the heck of it. Trying for GM4. Oh, there he is! GM4! SJB! He said I'm negative 13. I wonder if we can complete. Goodness gracious. Yeah, I wonder if we can complete, because he's strong. I've been trying to get somebody over in Europe, and I'll show you the PSK reporter map here in a little bit. I'm being heard, but I had an HB9 call me, but we couldn't complete. But if he's got me a negative 13, maybe this will happen. Hey, I got him! <laughs> I just worked DX with a coat hanger! Golf Mike 4, Sierra Japan Bravo! <laughs> Gosh, I'm more excited about this than when I worked Bouvet for an Atno.
November Juliet 5 Mike. I'm not sure where he is. I'm guessing somewhere on the East Coast. Worked him almost effortlessly with a coat hanger antenna. Do I dare try phone? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not that cocky. <laughs> All right, this is Alpha Charlie One, Romeo Hotel, QRZ. Whiskey X-Ray Zero Victoria. Whiskey X-Ray Zero Victoria. Scott, I've got you 5-3 in the U.S. 8023 New Hampshire. Well, thank you very much. I have you probably about a 5-8, but I'm using a coat hanger vertical for an antenna. I am transmitting on a coat hanger, believe it or not. QSL? QSL on the coat hanger. Thank you for the 5-8, and uh, hope you have a happy new year and 73. All right, fine business. Thank you for the contact, 73. All right, this is Alpha Charlie 1, Romeo Hotel, QRZ. Yeah, about 5859 on the beam on the coat hanger. Station ending in Seattle, November 20. Not as strong, but I worked him. <laughs> Another coat hanger, QSO. Well, what do you think about that? Last night when I was assembling this, I thought it was gonna be a real stretch to even get this thing to match to my IC7600, let alone make any QSOs. That is a coat hanger vertical. <laughs> and a base is made out of a... That is actually a container of prunes. <laughs> That was in my recycle bin. Yeah, I left the hook on it. I figured it'd act as a capacity hat. <laughs> I loaded it up on 10 meters. I worked Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and I worked Scotland on FT8. No. <laughs> I can't believe it. Where'd you have the antenna at? It's sitting on the ground in my front yard. So it was a ground mounted coat hanger antenna. Wow. One of them was W1AW, and he, yeah, he gave me a 229. <laughs> he barely <laughs> heard me. But a guy in New Hampshire heard me pretty solidly on phone, and I worked a guy on Massachusetts uh, pretty well on um, CW, and the contact with Scotland was FT8, of course. Yeah. I mean, what else would it be? Yeah. Um, so there you go. Unbelievable. Yeah, it is. It's, I, I, I tell you what, I was just super excited when anybody heard me at all. So you're going to work your DXCC on. <laughs> well, Scott, I'm proud of you. You're getting into building now. Well, it was more of a smart-ass experiment than it was a, a build, what, what but nevertheless. You, what, what, how'd you get the idea? Well, I, I actually, the idea I got from uh, Roly, ZO1BQD, apparently he tuned up a nail one time and made a contact with it. That's the story anyway, so that's what inspired this. DXers, we often will complain that sometimes this desired signal you want to hear is so weak that the operator on the other end must be using a coat hanger for an antenna. Yeah. Well, here it is. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 10 meters is very nicely open. I mean, it's not spectacular. I'm not hearing the stands like Pakistan, Uzbekistan, yeah. and those deep DX, but if you want to work pretty much anything in Europe right now on 10 meters, it's the time. Well, I'm going to get on and look, listen then. I really want to get that little uh, uh, QRP rig on the air. Print 3D printed this key, and then I I made that one. The problem is being as light, and when you try to use it, it slides around the table. Yesterday, yes, a few days ago, I found on Amazon weights that are specifically for that. So I'm going to order some weights to put on the base of this, and then I can use that with the QRP Labs transceiver. And if your beam ever goes out, now you know what to use. Yes, <laughs> a coat hanger vertical. Yeah, go get a, get a coat hanger out of the closet. <laughs> I hope the uh, 2025 will be a good one with good health and uh, prosperity for you and the family, mate. Over. Uh, amen to that, brother, to be sure, and to you as well. So thank you very much for the QSO this morning, and we will look forward to seeing you again down the log. Mike Whiskey Zero, Yankee Victor Kilo from Whiskey X-Ray Zero Victoria. 73, Eddie. Take care. Many, many thanks, brother. Always a pleasure, Scott, to get you in the log there. We'll catch you soon again. Thank you. Good luck, and uh, God bless you. Well, it's the next day, and I'm back on my standard 10-meter antenna, and it's time for me to get serious for a moment and add a little disclaimer about this video. Yesterday's cues were really fun, but I don't want to give the impression that severely compromised antennas are just fine and you'll work the world with them. 
Although you saw my successes, it really was a struggle to make these cues, much more than the video showed. After all, I was using a ground-mounted coat hanger vertical antenna. Thankfully, we had good conditions near the peak of a solar cycle or no one would have heard me. I also want to touch base on antenna matching devices slash tuners. Some YouTube producers give the impression that antenna matching devices are the solution to your mismatched impedance equation. Well, yesterday my IC7600 saw a flat match with a 1.1 to 1 SWR, yet a loud W1AW superstation gave me a 229. That pretty much is all you really need to know. Antenna matching devices work well for correcting some minor to moderate impedance issues, but major corrections will likely result in a notable reduction in signal strength. And that said, it's absolutely in your best interest to install the most effective and efficient antenna system possible. Thank you very much for watching at 73 from Whiskey X-Ray, Zero Victoria. Will this be my next antenna experiment? It's tempting, but... No.